uh, cancer free but never free from cancer. A couple of years ago, I saw this quote on something that a friend had shared online, and it stuck with me. In that one sentence, my whole situation felt relatable. I've used that phrase to this day in any conversation, any interview, any cancer related topic, and I've always felt it's given me a way for it all to make sense. Oh, nervous. <laughs> You're all scared of that. Um, <laughs> the month before my 26th birthday, I was diagnosed with stage 2A clear cell adegarcinoma, no more commonly a cervical cancer. My treatment consisted of 25 sessions of radiotherapy, five rounds of chemotherapy, and three torturous sessions of brachiotherapy. This was done in an intensive seven week period from November that year to the 30th of December. As of the 27th of March, 2023, I celebrated five years remission and was given the all clear. As a, <laughs> As a result of my treatment, I have several permanent side effects, some of which I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. Over time, I've learned to live with these and adjust where I can. For example, I don't leave the house without knowing where the nearest bathroom access is. Yeah. <laughs> and I always carry tissues and even a spare pair of underwear with me. You're allowed to laugh. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is a lot that happens after cancer that people don't realise. For me, it felt like I couldn't talk about cancer anymore because my treatment was over and there was no evidence of disease. Even the word cancer makes people retreat into another room and lock the door, leaving you sit on the outside. The reality is that life after cancer will never be the same, and that in itself is a mourning period that we all face. For each of us, the challenge we face after treatment is a whole different journey of its own. Now for me, admittedly, in the first two years post-treatment, I tried to pretend like it didn't happen, within obviously the limits of my abilities. I practically threw myself into life, doing anything I could to forget. But the truth is, we never forget. From this point, I realised that I needed to accept what had happened and figure out what I needed to do, not to let it win, not to let it take over the life and the future that I've been gifted with. This is like that's distracting me. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst going through my treatment and recovery after, I was dealing with so many different life challenges on top of it some that people could relate with, and some that people couldn't. At such a young age, it felt like I was drowning and incredibly alone. Now over time, some of those other bits in life started to mend, and it was allowing me to really focus on what I needed to do to finally accept what had happened and the things I can't change. I had begun really working on myself around three years post-treatment, doing lots of self-care and self-love exercises. Now I know a lot of people find the whole self-love mindset a little bit of old cos work. To be honest, I was probably considered one of those people at one point, but if you do give it a try, you might find yourself surprised by the change that it can create. A challenge that I'm going to set you all today is something really simple. Each day when you first wake up, or just before you go to sleep at night, tell yourself three things that you're grateful for in that moment. Try not to do the same thing every day, that's cheating. <laughs> but really think about those little things that have happened. One of the ones I love doing is just having a really fresh cup of tea, first thing in the morning, listen to the birds sing. How can you not be grateful for that? What has also helped me a lot is, did I skip it? No, I didn't, sorry. What has also helped me a lot is finding a purpose. Not just in the things that we do in our everyday life, or the people that we spend our time with, or even the material objects that we have in our possession, but rather the power that I have to make something special out of the hell that I endured. I focus a lot of my time and energy on fundraising for charities that focus around cancer, as well as offering support to others and advocating about cervical screening or the early menopause. I decided I was going to turn what happened to me into something that will do good and something that will hopefully help others. Oh, I flipped that well then. <laughs> that was going to confuse me. As of today, I've raised over £4,000 for cancer research, £1,750 for Joe Cervical Cancer Trust, I've done a radio interview for a local radio station, featured in a video for Northampton General Hospital for tips about cervical screening, I featured in a video for World Cancer Day, had an article published on Joe's Trust website. I was also a guest speaker on a webinar around gynecological cancers. Guests appeared on a self-love podcast. 
Code founded a support group for early menopause called Femtine. Yeah. Details of that. Yeah. Had an article published on a local newspaper site, and today I stood here in front of you all sharing my story. But the most rewarding and important thing that I have done is receiving messages from others to share how my story has helped them, how I changed their mind about cervical screening, or how I inspired them to keep going. Changing the life for just one person was enough, but changing the lives of many others is something that I never thought possible. I will be honest, the journey to where I am today hasn't been smooth. I still have days now where I struggle, where I sit and resent the world for putting me through it all. I have days where I hate myself, my body, and I wonder what it was that I did so wrong that made me deserve all of that. But as time goes on, I have more days where I am proud of myself, and more days where I can embrace everything that I am. But you've got to let yourself feel any emotion that you need in order to get through those bad days. Scream into a pillow. <coughs> Eat a family-sized bar of chocolate to yourself. Go shopping and buy things you don't need. <laughs> Heck, even stand on the top of a mountain or a hill and just shout at the world. But once you're done, look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that you are amazing. You are loved and you're treasured and then give yourself a big hug. Embrace what you can now in its fullest in whatever capacity that looks like to you. What happened to us all will never go away. For a lot of us, we will have to continue with the permanent side effects that act as a daily reminder. For all of us, we'll never forget. But what we can control is what, how we use that emotion, the forcing drive, that anger, the sadness, and what we can do with it. I didn't want to stand here today and focus on talking about the bad and the ugly of cancer, because we all know what that looks like. And I didn't want to stand and talk about all the things that I went through, because we all know how that feels. Instead, I wanted to try and inspire hope in others who need it. If someone asked me 10 years ago what does my future look like, I would have shared all my hopes and dreams, like it was some sort of fairy tale and the world was my oyster. If someone asked me that same question five years ago, I wouldn't have had an answer. But if you ask me that question now, I could tell you about all the wonderful things I've got planned, including getting married. My goals and ambitions, and they're nothing like the ones I had 10 years ago, they're better. Cancer free, but never free from cancer. Weirdly, this phrase brings me comfort. And in sharing with you all today, I hope that you might find comfort in these words in your own way. So thank you everybody for sharing this time with me today and hearing about my story. If you have any questions for me or you just want to talk, I'm always happy to have a talk for England. <laughs> we hope that you enjoy all the activities that we've organised for you today and hopefully you can find connections with other people too. Thank you.